In this video, I'm going to walk through writing the equation of a hyperbola in standard form and then graphing it. Um, I wanted to start with a quick explanation um, for the equations of hyperbolas in general. Uh, so first of all, they look a lot like the equation of an ellipse, with the, the one exception that you have subtraction here. The equation of a hyperbola is a difference. There's subtraction as opposed to a sum. Uh, now one thing you have to look for when you graph a hyperbola is the positive term. If, if x is positive in the equation of the hyperbola, then it'll be oriented horizontally and the graph will look something like this. If the y term is positive, or if the y expression is positive, then it will be oriented vertically and the graph will look something like this. So just be sure that you watch for that. All right, so here's the uh, actual example I wanted to work on. You're given this fairly ugly equation uh, to, and told that it's the equation of, hy of a hyperbola, although we didn't really have to be told that. Um, but our task is to write it in standard form and then graph it. Uh, the reason we don't have to be told that it's hyper hyperbola, you can tell right here. Uh, when you have a difference with, between the, x, uh, the y squared and the x squared here, so we're subtracting, uh, then you know it's, it's a hyperbola. If this were a, a plus sign right here, then this would be the equation of an ellipse. And, and that's where you can tell right there, with the, whether you're adding or subtracting those squared terms. Okay, so now to put it in standard form, and I had the standard form on the, the previous slide. Uh, since the y term is positive, so I'll copy the um, standard form that we're looking for in this case, would be y minus k squared, the positive term will go first, over some constant, minus a perfect square um, in the x expression over some constant, equals 1. So that, oops, this is supposed to be squared. That's the uh, equation that we're, that we're looking for. The first thing that I would suggest is to group the, uh, group the y terms in one parentheses. So 4y squared, and then we've got the 24y, and group the x terms in another parentheses. Now be careful uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the negative outside. So remember, that's going to change the sign on everything inside. So where I had negative x squared originally, because of that negative out front, I'm going to write just positive x squared here. And where I had plus 4x originally, because the negative is going to change the sign out here, I want to write minus 4x. And then uh, the one last thing is move the constant to the other side. So this is equal to negative 16. Um, you can always double check if you're not feeling great about the negative 4x. Double check it by distributing the negative. So if I distribute, I have negative x squared, which is good, and positive 4x, which is what I want. So this looks good. Now we need to complete the square in each of these groups. First of all, in this uh, y group, you, when you complete the square, you need to start with just a plain old y squared in front and not not 4y squared. So if you have a coefficient on your squared term, you need to pull that outside of the parentheses. So if I pull the y out, then this plus, um, sorry, if I pull the 4 out, then this plus 24 becomes plus 6. You divide it by 4. Okay, and then remember you can always double check by distributing the 4 and it should match what you had above, which it does. Um, I'm going to leave a space now for the magic number that completes the square, so we'll find that in a second. And then move on to the x group here. So it's just plain old x squared in front in that x expression, so that's fine. We don't have to pull anything out in front of the parentheses since we already pulled out the negative. Uh, and I'll put a little plus blank for when we complete the square equals negative 16. And then uh, Put a little blank here to remind you that whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So whatever we add or subtract on the left side of the equation, we need to match it over on the right side. Okay, uh, so next thing, figure out how much to add. So right here, uh, inside the parentheses, we remember to figure out how much to add. You divide by 2, and then you square it. 
So 6 divided by 2 is 3 squared would be 9. Over here, take the coefficient of x, so in this case, negative uh, 4. Divide it by 2, which will give us negative 2, and then square it. So that would be positive 4. Now there's one thing to be really careful of with these problems, when you have something out in front of the parentheses. When we uh, squeeze that 9 inside this parentheses, we didn't really just add 9. Because of the 4 out front, this is really plus 4 times 9, so this is really adding 36. So to balance it on the other side of the equation, we can't just add 9. We have to add 36. Okay, same thing in this x expression. Because there's a negative in front, when we squeeze that plus 4 into the parentheses, that's not really plus 4. That's actually a minus 4 that we put in there. Um, if you distribute the negative here to all these terms, what we inserted was negative 4. So we want to match that on the other side. This should be negative 4. Okay. So now, to clean up what we have here, so the 4 is out front. This expression right here, you want two numbers that multiply to give you positive 9 and add up to positive 6. That will be positive 3 and positive 3. So this is y plus 3 quantity squared. And, and one shortcut that I mentioned in a previous example, it's always half of this number. So positive 3, you can get it that way too. Uh, minus... Okay, two numbers that multiply to give you positive 4 and add up to negative 4. That would be negative 2 and negative 2, so x minus 2 squared. And here again, it's half of that number. Equals, if you add this up, negative uh, 16 plus 36 would be positive 20 minus 4, so this is positive 16. Okay, and remember that we're looking for this form right here, so we want a 1 here. So just like you do with the equations of ellipses, or ellipses depending on, I say ellipses. Anyway, uh, divide everything by the constant here. So divide everything by 16. And reduce. So divide by 4 top and bottom, and this will be 4. And then here, this will be 1. And so here is the standard form for the equation of the ellipse. I'm going to write it on the next page here. Okay, so our standard form is y plus 3 squared over 4 minus x minus 2 squared over 16 equals 1. So there's that part of the problem done. Now we need to graph it. Okay, so to graph this thing, the uh, coordinates for the center will be, let's see, the x-coordinate, so it comes from here, remember it's always opposite sign, so the x-coordinate is positive 2, the y-coordinate, it's always opposite sign, so the y-coordinate is negative 3. So this thing is centered at 2, negative 3, here, and it's oriented vertically because the y expression is positive. So the graph is going to look like this. Okay, but to graph this more precisely, what we need to do, we plot the four points around the center the same way you do for an ellipse. So from the center, since this is with the y right here, so then it's, and this is equal to 2 squared, we're going to go up 2 and down 2 from the center. And those will be the actual vertices for the um, hyperbola. It'll be these two points. Uh, but we need these x values as well. So since this is 4 squared, we want to also plot the points uh, 4 units to the right and 4 units to the left. And now we draw a box around those four points. Or we draw a box around the center going through those four points. And then you draw the diagonals of that box as dotted lines. These are sort of like asymptotes for the graph, or they're going to guide the shape of the graph.
okay? And then last thing will be to draw, so we have these vertical parabolas opening up and down. They're gonna sort of follow those diagonals of the box. So it's gonna go out this way, something like that, and go out this way. So the diagonals of that box, you wanna draw this box and draw the diagonals. That determines how wide or how narrow uh, these parabolas are. If we had a smaller movement you know, left and right, then you'd have a smaller box and the diagonals would have been a little, um, they would have given us a narrower frame. So you would have had a narrower uh, hyperbola. Okay, and then that graph in red is the graph of the hyperbola.